I'm going to crack on. So some of you guys will have met me before. Some of you, uh, you know, fortunately for you, today's the first time. Um, I'm Mark Lambda. I'm from Corporate Visions. Um, I'm quite new to this group. I'm honoured to be invited. Um, I've been asked and, again, happy to share what we've been doing on one particular topic, right? Um, you know, you can see a number on the screen in front of you. And it's, uh, it's, contact, uh, it's contextless. It means nothing. So I want you to put your mind to what you think that number might represent. I'll take some bids and I'm going to start with Jerry. Jerry, what do you reckon that 70 represents? Uh, number of discovery meetings you've had since lockdown. <laughs> That's, you're lowballing me there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? 70 days since lockdown. Nope, that's a great guess. It's a great guess. And now the next time I do this presentation, I'm going to put a different number on there. It's going to be the day since lockdown. 70 is the percentage number of sales calls as of December 2019 that were being carried out by B2B salespeople in America and the UK on a remote platform. Okay. And the reason I bring it to your attention really is because a lot of the world has started to react to the context that remote selling is a new challenge for people. It's not, right? The, the pot with the lobster in was getting warm. It was getting warm before COVID. Selling over WebEx was something that we were all quite comfortable with and we were actually doing quite a lot of. So the first thing, we've seen a huge uptick in demand of people trying to skill their people on how to conduct themselves um, well on, on, on selling calls that are delivered over the internet. Um, but they need to look back. They need to look back into their, into their organization and work out what, what are their true skills in this kind of area, right? It's not as big a change as, as, as some people in the world are reacting. And I just build that out a little bit for you because I want you to consider the three key paradigms that we've been studying. Yes, 100% of sales calls are now remote. And if I was writing a headline for the Daily Mail, we could say that every single field sales representative has now been demoted to being an inside sales representative, right? But as it was, even our field sales representatives were conducting 50% of their sales calls remotely from their home office or from a conference room in our, in, in, in our facilities. We were doing as an industry, a lot of online sales calls. And interestingly, Jerry, the most commonly conducted call that's done remotely pre-COVID-19 was what some people in the industry would describe as a discovery call, right? A lot of organizations had put in place some kind of parameter that would say that the first call, in order to major on the qualification part that we, we need our salespeople to do well, um, would be done via WebEx in some way, shape or form. But you know what? There is something that has changed and it's changed substantially. And it's this. It's now common for us to do presentations with video, okay, with these tiny little boxes along the top of our screen. Um, anecdotally, I do a lot of selling. I love selling. I enjoy my profession very, very much. I reckon presenting over a video link, I've done no more than 12 times in my entire life at the beginning of 2020. It's not unusual for me to now take place in internal and external meetings where I present using video, using the webcam on my Mac five to six times a day. It's become a modality challenge that everybody is facing and everybody is learning, but it's becoming adopted as quite normal. We have seen a massive flip sales, a lot confirm this too from some of the video outreach study that they've been doing that people are now using video more than ever before. Video has become the de facto norm, and it's now unusual for a salesperson to go on to a call like this and not have attendees with video on, showing you a little window into their world, a little window into their emotions. But let's make no bones about it. That's a change. It's something that we can skill people to handle, but it's a new type of challenge, right? And the reason it's a new challenge is we were all trained as salespeople to manage a room, a room full of five, six buyers. We learned all of the skills in order to be compelling in that environment. We were standing in front of them and our visual cues as to how they felt about what we were saying was not relegated to a one inch by uh, three quarters of an inch box on their screen, right? 
we were getting much, much more feedback from our audiences. In fact, truth be told, most of us were using our slides as a gateway to a conversation that would take place in a room. Our research is now showing us, and I'll explain how we do our research, why we do our research, and the kind of the background to what we do. Um, it's showing us that your slides are going to have to do a lot more work in the modern video-based post-COVID world, right? So we're, we're having to see um, that, that we're seeing that salespeople are having to really, truly put their work and effort and energy into building slides that, that, that carry their discussion forward. Now, that's life, right? That's something that's changed. It's changed to us. But let's make no bones about this. These are very, very, very high stakes that we're dealing with. They're high stakes because we have a community of sellers that want to be effective and they need to understand which of the skills they need to translate going forward and come across in the new modality, which do they just simply shed and don't use anymore? And what are the new skills that they need to, um, need to acquire in the short form? Now, let me tell you a little bit about how the market has reacted to that. We hosted a webinar. We actually have hosted a bunch of them over the last few weeks. Um, we had a hugely popular one last week uh, with sales loft on personalization of emails. And it shows the appetite at the moment. That had 2,700 global registrants. That shows the appetite at the moment for the sales community to really refine their skills, to try and learn new things that are going to allow them to be effective in their marketplace. The seminar that we held on remote selling, on the deck that I'm about to run you through now, the, the, the data that I'm about to show you in our approach to that, had over 5,000 global re uh, registrants, of which 27% of our audience, and this wasn't to our liking, this wasn't what we put the webinar on for, but 27% of our audience were individual contributors, people that are selling in business. That was unheard of for us. We have a good cadence of, of, uh, of webinars, and we bring a lot of our IP free to market. What we're not used to is seeing the, the, um, the salespeople adopting and trying desperately to upskill themselves. Generally, salespeople are either too busy or not interested in taking that approach. So there's some remarkable statistics that are coming off of the back of the change that's happened due to COVID-19. But let's just recap. 70% of meetings were taking place remotely anywhere. And yes, there is a demand for new skills uh, to deliver a new modality. But before I talk about how we approach this and give you some data around that, let me suggest the following. And this is a key thing that we start a lot of shock and awe meetings that we have with our bigger clients. If your sales team struggled to articulate value to clients pre-COVID-19, nothing about the new environment is going to make their lives easier. Nothing about the new environment is going to allow them to get more time with prospects, which was what they used to do in order to try and hit on something that worked for them. We're seeing meetings are getting curtailed in their length, and the questioning that's available in online and remote sales calls is significantly different to that that you would experience if you were in the room with people. So up the other side of the, of, of the decline, the core provisions, we're a brain sciences company, right? We're massively influenced. 95% of every piece of IP we've ever published was driven out of this book here by a man called Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman is a psychologist that won a Nobel Prize for economics, which is a remarkable thing in itself. And he did so because he worked on modeling via simulations the way that the human brain makes decisions. And he was able to tell the world, and we've been able to build a, a successful training business, um, top 10 training company in the world, off of the back of the immutable forces that happen and have formed over thousands of years worth of human evolution. We do things in a very, very predictable way, and we do them in a highly emotional, highly charged way. And we use exactly the same brain to make our business decisions as we do to make every decision we make in everyday life. We do not, in fact, swap out our personal brain for a business brain, right? So when we set about the challenge that was in front of us, how do we equip some of the biggest sales forces in the world, including SAP, by the way, um, and including some of the biggest uh, um, uh, systems integrators, that are existing on the planet right now. What we needed to do is how do we use that psychology to help them be effective on calls like this? What are the things that people need to do? And we've got a series of steps that we know that salespeople need to follow to be effective in this environment. 